Well, it's good to be out here again. I haven't done a salvation message in a pretty good while, and I like to I like to do one about every few weeks because there's times that when you get to speaking in the Bible, you don't bring salvation out as clear as it needs to be. And I just felt like that I wanted to bring something that would be very, very simple. Um. I wear, I don't know if many people see it or not, but I wear an armband that is in my hand right now. And this armband has several colors on the armband. And there's times that on occasion, not as often as I would like it to be, there's a few people that will even ask me about what that is and what it is that I'm showing that for. And it's a great way to start a testimony of the Lord and his salvation to men, men and women, boys and girls. Um, I have a, a box here that's right beside of me that I've got these same colors in this box. I call it the message in a box is what I call it. But I just decided that, you know, to keep it simple, I would just use this just to keep it simple. You know, the Bible says, in the beginning, God. And God created man in his image and in his likeness. And at the time that he created man, there was darkness on the face of the deep, the Bible says. This color here is the black part. And if you notice in the black part, there's a little bit of white that's mixed in. There's people that are living in darkness without Jesus. And that little bit of white right here could very well be the qualities of that person's life that they think that they're okay. But we're all at one time was living in this blackness part right here. I can relate to this blackness. Was I a good person? Did I have white streaks in my unrighteousness? Yeah. So I can relate to this personally. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means that we're all a sinner. That means that we're all in this condition right here. Before we come to know Christ, we are in this condition. The Bible also says that in Romans 6, 23, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And generally speaking, death means the darkness and the blackness without the Lord. But God set up a reason to make the world because he saw that the world was going to be living in this blackness. And he created man and he created woman to believe in the Lord and trust in the Lord to keep from living in this state of blackness right here. So what did God do? God sent his only son to come and die 
on a wooden cross so that he could pay for my sin. So his blood paid for my sin. That red part right there is a symbolization of the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the blood, there is no remission for sin, meaning that we're sinners in front of God without the covering of the blood. The blood and the believing in the Son and believing that Jesus died and believing that Jesus died and rose again from the grave is what the story tells us. The story goes on to say how that he was raised from the grave. Romans 10 and verse 9. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. See, he was dead at one time in that grave that Nicodemus and Joseph had put him in. This blood is perfect blood. It's a symbolization of perfect blood. His blood is the only thing that can give us salvation. Our righteousness back here where this dark piece is can't give us salvation on our own. We need the help of the one that shed his blood on Calvary. So the necessity of the red blood is highly important because without the red blood, there is no forgiveness. There is no Christ. We're all going to live in the darkness of this world, no matter how we think we look to the world and how beautiful we are. Without the blood of Christ, we are in darkness. The next color, I don't know that the camera's actually going to pick up on, but this here has some blue in it. And the blue is for baptism, meaning water. Water is considered to be somewhat of a bluish color. But you know, you can be baptized in water. And if you miss out on the blood, the blue is not going to help you. You can be baptized over and over and over and over again. The blue doesn't give you salvation. Only believing in the blood gives you salvation. So yes, you can be baptized, but you can be baptized without believing in the blood and you haven't got nothing. You're just a wet person. In this state right here. The next color. Is the white color. This color right here. Is the color of righteousness. God makes us righteous. Not because of us. Not because of how good we are in the darkness. And then the blackness. That's not what makes us righteous. See, a lot of people look at them little white spots right there in the black. And they think that that there impresses God. That does not impress God. If you're in blackness, there is nothing here that God is impressed with. The only thing that impresses God is that the blood of his son and believing in the blood of his son. Without the blood, you can, you can be in darkness and still be lost. You can even be baptized and still be lost. But when you receive the blood, 
in salvation, where we all can relate to this color here. If you're lost out there tonight, this color is where you're living. You're living in this color right here if you have never been saved. But if you have truly been saved of the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God has come to you, then you're living in this red atonement of the blood that he paid for on Calvary when he went to the cross and he died. So this color here of the blue is just obedience to the person who believes in the blood of the Lamb. This is just sort of a witness that you believe in the blood of the Lamb, that there is something that has come to the person that is living in darkness, that you're no longer living in darkness when you come to Jesus. You're no longer living in that darkness. Does that mean that we all of a sudden turn in to a, a different color person? No, we all are going to live our life in this state right here. But when we come to know the Lord Jesus, we're going to be in this state. We're always going to focus back to this. This is your focus right here. All these other colors is important, but none of them matter more than that color right there. So, yes, you can be baptized. And it won't do you no good without the red color. Then you move over here to the white. The white represents righteousness of God. There's no way you can be righteous with God without the blood applied to your life. You see yourself in the darkness, and you don't like what you see, and you want to get away from the lifestyle of living in this darkness. And you come to Christ by faith, believing that he died on a cross for you. So the red blood is the focus color so far. The blue just shows evidence of the change when you believe in the blood of the lamb. So the white is evidence of these other colors. The white is the righteousness of Christ. It's not your righteousness. It's not my righteousness. His righteousness is white. It's pure. It's holy. God allows you and I to become righteous, not because of us, not because of what we do, he allows us to become righteous by the blood of his son. That's the only thing that makes us righteous is the blood. So if you're living in righteousness and you're living in your own righteousness, and you have never witnessed to this color of the red, you know where you're living at still? You're living in the darkness. This is just as simple as I know how to bring it out. After you recognize the righteousness, you recognize the fact that you desire to grow. A plant is this color. A house plant is this color. My greens I have outside in my pots is resembles this color. Because of the righteousness and because of the baptism is because of the red blood. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to be in the red blood 
But are they really going to value their baptism? Are they really going to value the righteousness of God, that God makes a person righteous? Is people going to accept the fact that, you know what, God has given me the ability of growing, but many people don't grow. Many people just sort of stay in that color right there. And that little bit of darkness right there. They enjoy that little life of being in darkness. And God says, no, when I save you, I put my blood inside you. So this is what makes us desire to want to be obedient in baptism. Baptism does not save you. Baptism does not save you. Salvation and believing in the blood of the Lamb is what saves you. So if some minister is telling you, now, Joe, you got to be baptized, ask yourself one question. Was the thief on the cross that said, Lord, remember me, was he baptized? Jesus told him that day, today, you will be with me in paradise. He wasn't baptized. So is baptism good? Yes. It Does Jesus tell us to be baptized? Yes. But he wants us to value his red blood. He wants us to value that we're not living in darkness anymore. He wants us to value the fact that he wants us to be obedient in his righteousness that he puts inside of us. And if he puts righteousness inside of us, then he wants to see our life and our testimony for the Lord as being this color of the green. Our testimony should grow. Our testimony should be important to the world because the world is stuck on that color. That's what the world sees in a lot of Christians. They don't see the red blood. They don't see the baptism. They're not in the church to witness that you got baptized. Sad to say, they don't even really witness to the fact that they're looking at the righteousness that God is in you. They don't see the growth in you because there's really no desire to grow. That's what always concerns me is a person that is supposedly born again. Supposedly, they have been Blood bought by the blood of the lamb, but yet they have very little growth. And you know, the Bible says some's going to be 30, 60, and 100 fold. Some's going to go by the wayside. Some's going to go on stony ground. Some is going to be with the briars. Some is going to be good fruit, but even the good fruit might only be 30-fold. Jesus talked about 60-fold and 100-fold. But when this life is over, and our life down here is done in the green area, God has one special place for you and I. And that special place is gold. Now this don't look like gold. This don't look like gold. But it represents the gold streets of heaven. Now what, what color did I focus in on more than any other color? I focused in on this color. 
because that's where a lot of us are living today without the Lord. We desire a change, but we don't know how. Let me tell you how. You believe in the blood. You believe in his son that died on the cross. And the Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That gets you to where you desire to be baptized. The unit was baptized. He saw water. And he wanted Philip to pull over to the side of the road where he could be baptized. And Philip baptized him. But did that baptism save this unit? No. He already believed. He already got out of the color of the black and got into the color of the red. He didn't stay there. He got baptized like the Bible said. And he got righteousness only from God. Now, we don't hear very much about what the eunuch did in the green state of his life. The Bible doesn't tell us a lot about the eunuch. It doesn't tell us a whole lot. But we know this. We know that he is in heaven because he believed in the blood. I hope that this is simple enough that you can believe in the blood. And that's the reason Brother Kenny wears this everywhere I go. Because look how much it's an honor for me to remind somebody that might be living in darkness. They might be religious. The white color here might be their their religion. Their greenery might be a fake greenery. They might have even been baptized. But you know what? Without the red, you don't have nothing. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What you need to do today, you need to call on him. Take the time to call on him today. Elderly Ministry is the website. You can call me here. And if you need to talk, I'll talk with you. I'll explain the verses. We'll go through the verses together. If I can do anything to help you, leave a message when you call. The website has my phone number. You're welcome to give me a call anytime, okay? Hope you got something from this. Thank you for watching.